actually use water to run your car. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. How does a high school dropout become the creator of the water-powered car? Stanley Meyer is the epitome of the American dream, an amazing adventure from a modest upbringing to a groundbreaking invention. However, I must warn you, there are two different sides to Stanley Meyer. On one hand, he was a visionary. He invented a device that could break water into hydrogen and oxygen, and then use the hydrogen to run a car engine. He claimed his device could end the world's energy and environmental crisis. He had many patents and honors for his invention. He motivated many other researchers and enthusiasts to pursue his work. He was a man of faith and passion. And yet, on the other hand, Stanley Meyer may be a hoax. He never showed that his device worked or how it worked. He never let anyone check or confirm his claims. He never revealed or protected his device or its parts. He faced many lawsuits and allegations of cheating and fraud, and he died in a mysterious way saying, they poisoned me. Meyer's story is both captivating and disputed. But before all that drama and mystery, we need to travel back to 1940, where a young boy is born in Columbus, Ohio. Stanley Meyer was born on a sunny day in August 1940 in Columbus, Ohio. He had a twin brother, Stephen, who shared his curiosity and creativity. They were always tinkering with things, making their own toys and gadgets out of scraps and spare parts. They dreamed of becoming inventors and changing the world with their ideas. After finishing school, Stanley joined the military and served his country with honor. He later applied to Ohio State University, hoping to pursue his education. But he never graduated, as he found the academic system too rigid and limiting for his restless mind. He preferred to learn by doing, by experimenting, and by discovering things on his own. He had a knack for inventing things that solved problems or improved existing technologies. He had many patents, which are legal documents that protect his inventions from being copied or stolen. He invented things for different fields, such as banking, oceanography, and heart monitoring. He was a religious man, and he always thanked God for his work. He often said, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. He worked at the Battelle Foundation in Ohio, which is a company that does research and development for technology. He also worked with NASA on the Gemini space program and the Star Wars project. He made an important contribution to aerospace technology with his energy feeding system on concept EBID. He was recognized by many national and international scientific groups and organizations. He won the award inventor of the year in 1993 and got support from other countries like Canada, England, and Sweden. But what drove him to pursue his passion for invention? What inspired him to create something that could change the world? What challenges did he face along the way? To answer these questions, we need to go back to 1975, when he had an idea that would spark a revolution. In 1975, there was a big problem with oil in the US. Some countries in the Middle East stopped selling oil to the US and oil prices went up a lot. The US was running out of oil and many businesses lost money or went bankrupt. The car industry was in trouble because people didn't want to buy new cars that used gas. Stanley Meyer wanted to make a difference. He wanted to make a car that could use water instead of gas. He thought that this would be better for the environment and cheaper for people. He made a device that could break water into hydrogen and oxygen, which are the two parts of water. He used the hydrogen to make energy for the car and let the oxygen and the extra water out of the car. This did not harm the environment at all. He put his device on a buggy that he painted with the words water powered car. He also showed his Christian faith to show that he cared about God's creation. He said that his car could go 180 kilometers with just four liters of water. That's amazing because water is very cheap and easy to find. He showed his new hydrogen powered car and did demonstrations around the US. Some of the people who saw his invention were Professor Michael Lawton, who was the Dean of Engineering at Mary College in London, Admiral Sir Anthony Griffin, who was a former controller of the British Navy, and Dr. Keith Hindley, a UK research chemist. Everyone who saw the car was impressed by how new and amazing it was. They all agreed that Meyer's fuel cell could turn water into hydrogen fuel with electrolysis and that it made more hydrogen than expected. Meyer also claimed that his device used less energy to break water than what science said was possible. He also said that he made an electric cell that could break tap water into hydrogen and oxygen with even less energy. But not everyone believed him. In fact, some people accused him of lying and cheating. They sued him, they threatened him, and they tried to stop him. Some people who gave him money to make his invention were not happy and wanted their money back. They thought that he was not doing anything new or special, but just using a normal way of breaking water with electricity. A court in Ohio looked into his invention in 1996. The judge asked three experts to look at his car, but Meyer did not let them. The experts said that his device was not new or special, but just a normal way of breaking water with electricity. They said that there was no proof that it could power a car engine. The judge then decided that Meyer had lied to the people who gave him money, and he had to give it back to them. He called them guilty of a gross and egregious fraud. 
This was very bad for Meyer, who depended on his inventions for money and reputation. It was also very sad for someone who said he wanted to save the world with his invention. Meyer also said that he had some scary stories of being chased by people with guns. He said they were from oil companies who wanted to stop him. He also said that he had been offered a huge amount of money to stop his technology and destroy it, but he said no. A scientist who wanted to know more about his project said that Stanley was very afraid and suspicious. He said that Stanley did not want to test his buggy to see if it worked, even if they promised not to look inside the black box that had the electric parts that made it work. Some people also questioned the validity of his patents, which were vague and incomplete. They said that his patents did not explain how his device worked or how it could overcome the laws of physics. In 1998, Meyer died in a mysterious way. He was at a restaurant with his brother, Stephen, and two investors from Belgium. He drank some cranberry juice and then something terrible happened. Stephen Meyer remembered what he saw that night. Stanley took a sip of cranberry juice. Then he grabbed his neck, ran out the door, fell to his knees and threw up violently. I ran outside and asked him, what's wrong, Stephen said. He said, they poisoned me. That was his last words. The police looked into his death for three months and said that he died of a brain aneurysm. That's when a blood vessel in the brain pops. He had high blood pressure, which can cause that. But many people who knew Meyer think that he was killed on purpose because his invention could have changed the world with free energy. There was also some other evidence that he was in danger. His patents got a lot of attention from governments, strangers from other countries, and big offers to buy his invention. His brother, Stephen Meyer, even said that the two investors from Belgium who were with Stanley when he died knew something. I told them that Stan had died and they never said a word, he said. Absolutely nothing. No sorry, no questions. I never ever trusted those two men ever again. Some people also speculated that Meyer was killed by agents of oil companies or foreign governments who wanted to suppress his technology or steal it for themselves. But who were they? How did they poison him? What evidence do they have to support their claims? And what happened to his invention after his death? To uncover the answers to these pressing questions, we must delve into the shadowy aspects of his story and the concealed forces that attempted to thwart his progress. The fuel cell is still alive today, with car companies like Toyota and Honda selling cars that use fuel cells. They are actually electric cars, but they use hydrogen and oxygen to make their own electricity. But they are not like Myers' invention. They use more energy and more water than he claimed. They are also a lot more complicated and expensive to make. Meyer's invention inspired new ways of making energy for today and tomorrow, but no one has made a car or an engine like his. His patent has expired and anyone can see it online, but no one has proven that it works or not. His buggy was locked in a room with no doors for a long time so that no one could take it or break it. But some people who did not believe Meyer said that it was so that no one could check it out and find the truth. It seems that in 2014, which was 16 years after Stanley died, the buggy showed up in Canada. It was owned by the Holbrook family who said they were friends of Stanley but nothing else is known about it after that. So what happened to his invention? Did anyone try to replicate it or remove it? Or did anyone find out how it really worked? Over the years, many people have tried to replicate Meyer's water fuel cell or create their own versions of it. Some of them claim to have achieved similar or even better results than Meyer, while others failed or faced difficulties. One of the most well-known replicators was Dave Lawton, a retired lecturer from England, who built his own water fuel cell based on Meyer's patents and videos. He said he was able to produce more hydrogen gas than expected by using a special circuit that pulsed high voltage and low current through the water. He also said that he was able to run a small engine with his device. Another replicator was Ravi Raju, an engineer from India, who also built his own water fuel cell based on Meyer's patents and videos. He said he was able to produce even more hydrogen gas than Lawton by using a different circuit that used radiant energy pulses. He also said he was able to run a motorcycle with his device. However, both Lawton and Raju faced some problems and criticisms. Their devices were not very reliable or consistent, and they had trouble measuring and verifying their results. They also had some legal issues with Meyer's patents and some conflicts with other replicators, and they never published their work in any peer-reviewed journals or submitted their devices for independent testing. There were also many other replicators who claimed to have made water fuel cells or similar devices, but most of them did not provide any credible evidence or documentation of their work. Some of them were accused of fraud or deception, while others were ignored or dismissed by the mainstream scientific community. One notable mention is Aga Wakar, a Pakistani engineer who gained significant attention in 2012 with his claims of inventing a water-fueled car. Aga Wakar claimed to have developed a system that allowed cars to run on water as fuel. He used a device called the Wakar Water Kit to split water into hydrogen and oxygen for the car's engine. However, scientists doubted his claims, stating that it violated thermodynamic principles. Independent investigations found no evidence to support his invention. Despite skepticism, Aga Wakar gained popularity in media coverage, attracting government officials. 
His invention was ultimately debunked, leading to criticism for promoting pseudoscience. The incident emphasized the need for scientific skepticism and critical thinking when evaluating extraordinary claims. Now, Meyer's water fuel cell was based on the process of electrolysis, which involves breaking water into hydrogen and oxygen using an electric current. However, electrolysis has limitations, including energy inefficiency and a maximum limit on hydrogen production. Meyer claimed that his water fuel cell overcame these limitations through a technique called resonance. He said that by tuning his device to match the natural frequency of water molecules, he could break them apart more easily and use less energy. However, there is no scientific evidence or explanation for how resonance could affect electrolysis in this way. Resonance amplifies motion or energy transfer, but does not increase the overall energy or force. Applying an electric pulse at the natural frequency of water molecules may make them vibrate more, but it does not add more energy to the system. Meyer's claims lacked scientific evidence and violated fundamental principles such as Faraday's law and the laws of thermodynamics. To understand his results, we would need to examine his patents and demonstrations, including how he measured and verified his claims and what evidence he provided for his invention. Meyer said his patents and demonstrations proved his water fuel cell, but his patents and his demonstrations were not good enough. They did not explain or show how his device worked or why it was special. They did not have any numbers or facts to support his claims. They did not follow the rules or standards of science. They did not convince or impress anyone who knew about science. His patents and his demonstrations were just words. They were not proof. So where is the proof? Where is the evidence that supports Meyer's claims? Where is the evidence that contradicts Meyer's claims? And where is the evidence that settles the debate once and for all? The truth is that there is no conclusive proof for or against Meyer's invention. There is no definitive evidence that confirms or denies Meyer's claims. There is no final verdict that validates or invalidates Meyer's work. Meyer's invention remains a mystery, unsolved and challenging. It potentially offers the possibility of a water-powered car, an abundant hydrogen through resonance, even the creation of free energy. However, its authenticity is still in question, as it may be impossible to achieve these feats. The future holds the potential for revival, improvement, testing, and application of Meyer's invention by inspired researchers, experts, and industries. Yet, there is also a risk of it being forgotten, dismissed, rejected, or abandoned by skeptics, critics, and in different parties. This was the insane story of Stanley Meyer, the man who made the water engine, and the mystery and controversy that surrounded his life and death. What do you think of his story? Do you believe that he invented a water-powered car that could save the world from fossil fuels and climate change? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insane stories like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.